Hello, my name is Jason Chonko and I'm the Applications Marketing Manager at Siglent Technologies North America. In today's video, we're going to take a look at an amplifier. And we're actually going to test the gain of this amplifier, which is a measure or a comparison of the input power versus the output power. Uh, so an amplifier is meant to amplify a signal. So we want to put in a certain amount of power and then see a higher amount of power on the output. Uh, this is a mini circuit ZFL 1000 series and per the data sheet this operating frequency is meant to uh, so it's meant to operate from 100 kilohertz up to 1 gig and it's meant to have about a 17 dB gain that means if we were to have 0 dB in we'd have 17 dB out um, and actually uh, because of the compression we don't want to put 0 dB in we're actually going to start getting compression at about 9 dB uh, which is shown in the uh, data sheet here as the output at 1 dB compression is 9 dB. So we actually want to minimize the power in and we're probably going to, uh, we're actually going to deliver about minus 40 dBm here and we're going to look at the output. So we're going to do a low level amplification and take a look at what would be considered the linear range for this particular amplifier. Um, so let's start by explaining a little bit more in detail what the amplifier is going to require. So you'll see that it has an input and an output what we want to do is control the input signal and then measure the output signal. We can do that very easily with the spectrum analyzer. In this case, we're using the Siglent SVA1015X spectrum and vector network analyzer. It has a tracking generator source. You'll see that connected here, TG source. This is where the output frequency is going to come. And it's going to go from our start frequency to our stop frequency. So the output signal it, frequency is going to sweep from start to stop and then we're going to measure it with the RF input. So in, in this case, what we're going to do is see the ampli amplitude with respect to frequency displayed on the, uh, on the spectrum analyzer front panel. This also requires a ground and a 15 volt DC power supply. So what we're going to do is use the Siglent SPD1168 uh, as the DC supply for this particular amplifier. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of the errors involved with the cabling before we connect anything up. So remember we have our tracking generator source and we're actually going to be knocking down the signal a little bit. Um, the amplifier or the spectrum analyzer tracking generator can go on um, press, press the tracking generator button can go to minus 20 dBm. Well, we have a gain of 17, so that's going to get us very close to 0 dBm. In order to stay away from the 1 dB compression and to more, more likely mimic the actual input signals that we're going to see on this particular amplifier, I'm going to actually lower that even more. I have an SMA to SMA 20 dB attenuator, so this is going to add an additional 20 dBm to this uh, minus 20, so we'll have an output level of minus 40 dBm. I'm actually going to connect this to the tracking generator and note that I'm spinning the SMA lug uh, or the, I'm sorry, the hex part. I'm not spinning the adapter and that's actually SMA adapters are very, very fragile uh, and so repeated spinning can actually score that interconnection. So in order to keep your SMA connectors working properly over a lifetime, you always want to turn the, uh, turn the hex end. And so then I'm going to take the RF input or I'm sorry, the RF input to the uh, to the spectrum analyzer, and I'm going to take an SMA to SMA through connection, and so SMA to SMA through, and again I'm tightening the hex end, I'm not spinning the barrel, and I'm going to put that through connection in, and now what I have is an adapter, a cable, an attenuator, the through connector, and then another cable to an adapter. All of these different connections are going to add some sort of error or add slight error to our measurement. And what we actually want to do is get rid of all of those and then we'll just replace this through adapter which is the hopefully has the least amount of influence on the measurement and we're going to replace that with a device under test in this case our amplifier. So this is what is called a, it's a normalization step. We're basically calibrating or removing all of the effects of the cabling from this particular uh, this particular setup. So once we have everything connected for the normalization, we're going to turn the tracking generator on. And we're actually, well, I'm going to take one step here. Uh, so you'll see we're at minus 40 dBm, even though we programmed minus 20. And we actually, I'm going to change the frequency. So our start frequency can actually, uh, this instrument's touch screen, so we can go 
Uh, let's go um, back. Let's go 5 meg. And let's go stop frequency of 1 gig. All right, so now we're going to go from start to stop. So 5 meg to 1 gig. Uh, I'm going to set our amplitude up. Our amplitude scale I'm going to set to 5 dB. And you'll see now we're at minus 40. And now I'm going to go back to the tracking generator menu and I'm going to turn on the tracking generator. Okay, so we're reading minus 40. Now I'm going to normalize it and that's actually going to mathematically subtract the original value from the new value and that's going to give us 0 dBm. So now we're making relative measurements to that original input. Now remember, we actually have minus 20 dB minus another 20, so minus 40 dB, but we're actually removing all of that mathematically uh, and now and we've got that 0 dBm. So everything we make after this, all the measurements are going to be relative. So now I'm going to remove the through connector and based on the proper connection technique for this particular amplifier, the first thing is to connect the output load. So we're going to connect the RF input. Make sure that's tight. Now we're going to connect the DC voltage and I'm going to start out at 12 volts. So on the amplifier curve, we actually have three amplifier settings or amplifier voltage values. One is 12 volts. So we're gonna apply that 12 volts first. Again, over here, we'll show you what we're doing. 12 volts and then we'll come back. And now we'll apply our RF input. So I'm just attaching the tracking generator. All right, we should be all hooked up. Now I'm gonna change our reference level. And we'll bring zero towards the bottom here. Oh, anyway. Just trying to get it lined up. Okay, there, so now we've got zero. We've got 17 or so. Um, all right, so this curve represented here, which is around minus 17 dBm, is the amplification curve for this amplifier at 12 volts from five megahertz up to one gig. And I'll show you the, the data sheet here in a second once we do a few more curves. What I'd like to do, this is the 12 volt setting, so I'm going to freeze this on the display so that I can compare it to other measurements that I'm about to make. I'm going to turn on the trace and I'm going to set up, this is trace A is the yellow trace and you'll see that it's clear right. That means that every successive pass it's going to overwrite it. What we can actually do in this case is press view. That's going to freeze it on the display. Now I can turn on a second trace, in this case trace B, and we'll turn that on to clear right and now you'll see a pink line up here. And now from 12 volts, I'm going to go to 15 for the drive voltage. So I just made a change to 15 volts. And you will see on the display that we have a now a little bit higher than that original measurement uh, or the, the 12 volt signal, which is yellow. We now have 15, which is shown in pink. We can press that to view. Now that's going to freeze that on the display. And now we could take a look at C I'm going to go clear right, and that's light blue. And they do give us an additional curve on the data sheet at 16 volts, so we'll do 16. You can see it's just slightly above the, uh, the purple line that we had, or the pink line that we had originally, and I can hit view there. So now we have shown uh, three different curves for this particular amplifier at three different drive voltages. Uh, we can use markers, select marker normal. We could select trace A, whoops and uh, we could move around the marker and we could take a look at the actual voltage gain or the gain value at different frequencies. So I'm just moving the marker along different frequency values. So here you can see the marker, here's the marker frequency position and here's the amplitude. So looking at about 16 to 17 dB across that operating frequency range. So now in this particular test, we've verified that this amplifier is uh, working according to specification across this frequency range. And uh, we're going to put in a few more videos based on this particular amplifier coming up very soon. Thank you very much for watching the video. If you have any questions, please contact your local Siglin office. Thank you and have a great day.